The first reading today, St. Paul tells us that we are not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the newness of your mind, so that you may discern what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. That is where the trouble comes in for us, because the devil is not stupid, and in order to keep us from doing the best thing, if he knows that he can't get us to do evil things, he will give us good things, lesser things, but good things nonetheless, to keep us from doing God's will. And that can be a very confusing struggle for us. How do we know? Because we aren't trying to be conformed to this world. We're trying to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. We're trying to do the will of God, and yet we keep tripping up. We look, for instance, at the gospel, and our Lord looks at his parents and says, how is it that you're looking for me? Do you not know I had to be about my father's business? Who would have thought that was the will of God? That at 12 years old, he's going to stay behind while everybody else leaves. That he's just going to be there peacefully answering all the questions and carrying on a conversation with the teachers. But that was God's will. He had to be about his father's business. And they didn't understand. And how could they? And so you see so how difficult this can be if even St. Joseph and our Blessed Lady didn't understand when our Lord was doing the will of his heavenly Father. How difficult is it for us to understand? Obviously, we have the advantage of 2,000 years of history and saints and so on, but ask yourself if you were alive 2,000 years ago, would you have understood the passion? Would you have been saying to the apostles, hey, this is okay, this is God's will, it's necessary, don't you understand? Look at all the things. No, we wouldn't have been doing that. We would have been just like everyone else and saying, it's not fair, this is unjust, how can you do this? And obviously, if it's unjust, it can't be the will of God, because God is just, God is good, God is perfect. So how could an injustice, such a grave injustice, be the will of God for our salvation? to bring about the greatest good. God allowed the greatest evil, and it doesn't make sense, does it? So when he's operating in your life, does it always make sense? As you look back at all the things that have happened in your life, all the quote-unquote, bad things that have happened to you that are the very things that God is going to use to make you a saint. Does that make sense? No. We think that if it's from God, it ought to be in a real nice package with a bow, and it should have our name on it, and it should have instructions and say, here's exactly what's happening, here's why it's happening, and because you are so wonderful and perfect, it's only going to be good. Right. There is only one who was wonderful and perfect, and look what happened to him. It was really good, wasn't it? Not from a human perspective, it wasn't. Only from a divine perspective. And so for us too, this is why St. Paul says, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Because we have to learn to look at these things differently. We have to learn to see them from God's perspective. And we need to be able to get rid of our human perspective on it, or at least our worldly perspective. So on one hand, we say we're not wanting to be conformed to the world. 
But then we see these things and recognize that our minds are very, very much conformed to the way that the world thinks, the way that the world operates, to worldly categories. If we're going to have our minds transformed, that means they have to be changed to be one with the mind of God. What could be better than that? The problem is that it is so far beyond us. As God says, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. No kidding. And so for us to be able to get there is not an easy task. It is not a quick task. It is not a task that will be understood by the people around you. And so it's a matter, though, of trying to see through prayer, because it's the only way that this can happen, what is God's will? If God is allowing this, whatever it happens to be right now in my life, somehow or another, that's part of his providence. That's his will. No matter how good, bad, or ugly it might seem to us, somehow this is part of God's will for me right now. If that's the case, then I should be at peace. If that's the case, then I should be striving to cooperate with God, to see what it is that he wants to do with this. Why is he allowing this? What is it that he's trying to do in my life? Is he trying to purify something? Is he trying to help me grow in virtue? Is he trying to point out some fault that needs to be overcome? What's he trying to do with this? That's the only way to conform ourselves to the will and to the mind of God. And we have to be conformed before we can be transformed. So that's the process that we all have to be about learning to try to see things from God's perspective, conforming ourselves to the will of God. But before we can conform ourselves to the will of God, we have to be transformed by the renewal of our minds so that transformed in the mind of God, we will then know what is truly good and perfect and the will of Almighty God.